You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike, and this is Kala Nostalgia Gemstone Opal. Uh, this is a little sample that I got from Shigur Inks. Uh, Alex over there contacted me and said, Hey Mike, I hear you really like Kala Inks. I'm getting those Kala Inks. You want to try them out? And I said, Yes, absolutely. So, it was very kind enough to send me a bunch of Kala Inks. So, I have most of them. And here they are in samples. I've put little... Uh, reinforcement rings on the top and I've uh, sort of swabbed those rings so you get an idea of what the color is going to look like and as you can see these are all kind of of a type so it's all these over here you have all these very muted colors of various shades and then all of a sudden you have like neons which are crazy look at that look at this one Woo. All right, uh, I've actually only used this one and I put it in a, don't put this in an extra fine. It's gonna be too light, you're not gonna like it. I'm gonna try that one again in a bigger nib, but um, they are kind of a muted color palette. And the other thing they have in common is that they are all pigmented inks. Pigmented inks are going to be uh, water fast. They're going to be, uh, and in my experience, they've all flown, uh, flowed, flown, flowed, had a good flow. Um, so I haven't had any trouble with this ink at all. Uh, stopping up or not writing or whatever when I called on it. I've had it in this pen, which is a Schaefer Legacy. It's a really nice pen with this beautiful inlaid nib. Uh, this pen is uh, labeled as a stub, but it is actually more of it, or sorry, it's labeled as a broad. There's the B, right? You gotta get in the reflection, there it is. But it's actually a very, very stubby broad, as you can see here, like it's almost flat. I don't think it's been worked on, I think that's just kinda how it came. So this is a very stubby sort of nib. It's not a crazy wet nib or anything like that, it's a pretty normal nib. Uh, this is the uh, the way it looks on this paper, which is a Rhodia 80 grams per square meter, which is what I always use. I describe the flow as mildly wet, I haven't had any trouble at all with it. Um, you know, flowing or any of that jazz. It seems like it is pretty good uh, performance. Unfortunately for this one, not great on the copy paper. I'm not really sure why. Uh, this is the uh, the Kala Opal line here. And you can see that it's got some like feathering going on. It's got a little bit of spread perhaps. And then on the back, it's got uh, it's got some fairly significant bleeding going on, which is which is a surprise, because usually these pigmented inks are very good on these kinds of uh, crappy office papers. But this one, not so good on the crappy office paper, so it's letting down the side just a little bit, I think. Uh, then you have here, uh, qualities, pigmented, and the, change, the, the color changes a little bit. So... It actually does the opposite of what a uh, an iron gall uh, ink will do. Iron gall tends to get darker as it dries. So you write with it, it's very light, and then it darkens over time. So like the the platinum uh, platinum classic series, citrus was famous for this in drying very quickly and in like changing very quickly. This one, however, seems to get lighter as it dries, which is a little bit weird. I I kind of. I kind of prefer it, I guess. I like watching it go on the page. That's kind of what got me into like fancy pens and like better gel pens and rollerball. I like watching the ink do a thing. And uh, this one gets lighter. And you know this channel, you know I'm all about like saturated inks, dark inks, that kind of stuff. And this one is just a little bit on the pale side for me. As you'll see, there are a bunch of versions of gray in the Kala Nostalgia and Opal, or sorry, Kala Nostalgia and Gemstone lines. And uh, this one I think is the lightest of the bunch. And um, it's a little bit too light for me personally, and combined with this weird like doesn't uh, doesn't work very well on copy paper thing, it's uh, it's not going to be my favorite. As far as comments, uh, I really expected a lot from this ink, unfortunately, and I'm kind of on the fence with it. So I do like that it's readable, and I'm actually kind of surprised how readable it is. But at the same time, I do wish it was a bit darker, uh, and I do wish it performed better on the uh, the kind of crappy uh, kind of crappy papers. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit, and we will uh, do a little water drop test here see how it does uh, we'll look at a chromatography we'll look at it on some other papers and we'll check it out uh, next to some other uh, some other comparable inks okay I don't have my syringe here I'm not sure where it is so I'm just gonna use my fingers <laughs> just gonna use my fingers gonna throw it on the page there there we go this is Rhodia I'm not worried about it like bleeding through whoa what happened to my focus there we go <laughs> there we go and uh, yeah, as we can see, it's not doing anything, which is actually what I expected. These inks are super good at resisting water. I mean, look at it, do nothing. It's very entertaining, right? Just nothing happening. Let's mop it up here, blot, blot, blot. And uh, yeah, nothing came off, nothing changed. This, <laughs> this, while it doesn't perform very well on copy paper, 
Once you get it on paper, man, it is not going anywhere. <laughs> and so you'll probably be unsurprised uh, that this is the chromatography. Yeah, where's that chromatography? There's not any. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, <laughs> it's just nothing. So it didn't move at all. There's like a little bit of a gray streak here. And you can see just like, I don't know, maybe a bit of a shadow here, but just kind of, kind of nothing. No problems there at all. Crazy, right? So that's the thing that pigments and inks are awesome at, and that is being water fast. And this one is no exception. Okay, so let's look at it uh, here. This is an Inky Fingers currently currently inked book. Uh, these are kind of disappearing. So if you want one of these wheat straw uh, Inky Fingers books, make sure that you uh, get on the get on the stick and find that online. Here it is, right here. Uh, as you can see, it's actually very pale, and this is the first time I'm like, oh no, this is gonna be a little bit light for me. I like my grays a little bit, a little bit, a little bit darker gray, a little bit more like a black. But uh, this one is definitely legible, I think, on this white paper. Now, if you put this on any on like a cream paper or something, I don't think it would work very well at all. Colored papers are not gonna do well for this, but on white, it's pretty okay. And I've had it in there since five two. Five, man, that's three months. I can't even believe it. Um, I think I've maybe reinked it. Maybe I've added some once, but uh, I haven't used this ink a whole lot because uh, I don't know. I write with it like mm, too light. This is an ink journal from Tomo or a Tomoe River ink journal from inkjournal.com. You can find them there. And here we go. This is uh, this is the ink on this uh, Tomoe River where I think it is actually. This is just too light. Like for me, nah, not for me. Some of y'all are going to love that, though, that kind of desaturated stuff that's actually going to be super water fast, too. Actually, let's put a little water on here and see what happens. I've never, I haven't done it on this before. The answer is nothing. nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, a little, little bonus water test for you. What does it do on Tomoe River? Nothing. <laughs> cool. All right. Neat. I actually kind of expected it to be not quite as water fast there. Uh, and now let's see, here are some, uh, comparable ones. Where is the, uh, this is on a Colodex card here. And I, I mentioned that there were four of them that were pretty close. I'm going to try to do them in order of darkness. So next we have here, uh, college gemstone collection moonstone, which is a very nice looking ink there, uh, going a step darker than opal. And then after that, we have college gemstone gray agate, which, uh, is a little bit darker even still than that. See if I can get it to, let's overlap them. Yeah, that, that, that's the ticket. And the last one is one that I've actually just started using. And this is a very nice one, actually. I'm really digging this one. This is Kala's Silimonite. I don't, I don't know what Silimonite is. These are all sort of gemstones or minerals. So uh, I'm not really sure, but this is a really nice gray. And, uh, and I dig this one. Actually, let's go ahead and write that on there. There we go. Got this in, in this gray arrow, and uh, I think the sulmonite is probably going to be my favorite. Although I'm looking forward to agate as well. I think these are these are in a good area. So you have these four, and there's no real reason to get all four, right? I mean, just find the the sort of the sort of saturation that you want. For me, it's going to be one of these two. Uh, for other people, it's definitely going to be down here. But uh, this is one of those nice things. You don't need the whole set. Just like find the one that you like in that family. All right. And then, because uh, we don't just have Kalid inks, uh, here, is, here it is next to Mont Blanc's Oyster Gray, which is by and large far darker, I think, than Opal. Opal is a bit, uh, is way lighter there. Uh, we've also got uh, Roaring Klingner's Sketch Ink, which is another pigmented ink. I actually like the Kalas better than the Sketch Inks, I think. Um, they, I mean, they both work pretty well, but uh, I think I like the Kalas a little bit better. This one is definitely a darker ink. I haven't gotten a chance to use Thea yet, uh, but I, I definitely will. And uh, here we go on more silvery sort of grays. We've got uh, Pilots, Irishizuku, Fuyusuyu Gun. And uh, this is, I think, a really nice steely kind of gray. A little bit more on the silver side than the opal is. Looks nice. We've got Sailor's Kobe 53 Pearl Silver, which is getting closer, I think, but still has that more steely kind of character to it. And then lastly, this is Kobe number 50. <laughs> I pulled two of the same one. I have two of the same. How about that? So anyway, there you go. Pearl Silver. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. Why not? Okay. All right. So this has been uh, Kala Nostalgia Gemstone Opal. Uh, and these go for 1075 in a 30 milliliter bottle from, uh, from well, 
from actually pretty much everywhere, I think. But Shigur has these. Check them out at shigurinks.com. And uh, thank you very much to Shigur for letting me have all these samples to play with and to show people. Because while Opal's not my cup of tea, it might be yours. And they definitely have some very cool inks that I am a super fan of. So that's it. I will see you all later. Peace out.